PC sind wieder. League Team. Hey everyone, Safe Locked here on behalf of the League Team. We have a lot to cover today, including our plans for preseason, challenges, and game modes. Here we go, guys. But first, let's I'm talk so about excited. The game. Let's talk about it, yeah. The game is in a shit fucking Overall, state. Please mention it. Here we go. All we're pretty happy with the state of League this season. But before we get into the details, let's dive into a topic that's been pretty popular lately, which is new champion balance. We're pretty happy, when we look guys. At the data, we actually see that new champions have been pretty balanced on release this year. Pretty with the balanced. Of Dr. Mundo. What about auction? Are you fucking crazy? That said, there's more to healthy gameplay than just win rates. And we're still hearing that new champions feel unfair to play against, particularly when it comes to complex abilities or overloaded kits. No shit. If we're being completely honest, we don't think our champions have overloaded kits overall. But what? That being said Are you fucking crazy? Viego? Auction? Gwen W? Oh, yeah, we, we don't have overloaded kits. Not at all, guys. It's completely normal that Auction is a champion that has two real abilities and the other two are just random in the kit there for no fucking reason. And if you remove them, the champion is still OP. Nice, guys. What the fuck are we thinking? Said there have been times when we've given new champions too many tools and had to pull back later to give them more clear weakness. Yeah, why does Auction have a mana region on W when the champion has actually no mana issues? Yeah, why does he have a revive when he's strong without it already? Yeah. Yeah, I would, li I would like an answer on that one. For example, Samira's ability to dash to allies was removed because it provided too much safety. Combined with her missile blocker, it made ZC... Why are we mentioning Samira? The champ is bad. ...being her too difficult, especially since that's one of her main forms of counterplay. Another thing we consider when we hear a champion feels bad to play against is their intended complexity. We try to make a healthy mix of high, medium, and low complexity champions. In this way, whether you like mechanical skill expression, point-and-click simplicity, or something in between, there's a new champion that interests you. For example, with Vex, we wanted to create a champion that was fairly easy to pick up, and we're happy to see she's hitting that mark. But beyond just how complex a champion is to play, there's also how difficult they are to understand. What? We want new champions to have unique gameplay, but you shouldn't need a wiki to know how to play with or against them. Yes, you should. Learning counterplay the is a skill you we do think is important but knowing what a champ can or can't do shouldn't be a part of it. This clarity is something we haven't always hit the mark on, especially with champions like Aphilios, who not only has a complex kit, but was also lacking UI clarity when he was released. Designing new champions is a constant balance between making- Yeah, and how long did you need to do it? How long did you need to fix it? Wasn't it like a couple of months after he got released, you, you actually tried to fix it? And you needed 20 nerfs to actually make him be balanced? Yeah, I think I think it was a little bit of a failure. I do agree with you. A little bit of a failure. Oh, oh Queen is OP. Don't like playing this Queen. Making something that's exciting, has clear counterplay, and isn't confusing. We're still trying to find that line, but we want to get to a spot where new champions aren't just numerically balanced, but that you all feel they're fair to play against. Beyond new champion releases, this season we've seen a wide variety of picks in every role. We've also seen a healthy improvement in diversity of playstyles across roles, especially in jungle. Yes, we've seen so much diversity. Gorjinker, 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 Gorjinker. Every fucking champion is just healing all of their fucking mind. So much diversity, guys. Everyone's building the same fucking item and every fucking role is playing 10 champions and the rest are all garbage. So much diversity. And top lane. Some of this is Jesus. due to direct champion changes, such as the kit adjustments that enable picks like Jungle Darius, Brand, and Morgana. New items like Anathema's Chain. Dude, no one wants Jungle Brand and Darius, man. Ah, like no one wants to see a Talon and a Zet in Jungle. They're meant to be soul lane. Just keep it that way. I'm so sick and tired of every jungler. Every champion just gets a random bonus damage from monsters nowadays. Like, what the fuck is this, dude? Why, are every, why is every champion just designed to be a jungler nowadays? How is that fun? I don't know. Change and Hullbreaker have also had a positive impact, especially in top lane where we're seeing a ton of champion diversity. No one's building Hullbreaker, our item's garbage. And finally, we know that some champion classes have- Okay, the boss is building it. ...have been struggling after the item system update. And we've wow. been working on some solutions. And they, and they, and they, and they, and they show Rihanna. Yes, guys. ...to help them out. And this brings us to our plans for preseason. 
With that, go. I'm going to hand things off to Brightmoon. We'll go more in depth on the upcoming changes. Okay, more after this game. This is gonna be fun. Whatever, let's go to something even less, more tilting. Hey everyone, I'm Brightman, the lead producer of gameplay on League of Legends. He doesn't even play the game? Yeah, <sighs> did. League is like a house. Oh, thank you Spurs Bed for three months. Sometimes we need to do a big renovation to keep it working well, like when we overhauled the item system. And sometimes we just need to add some new furniture. For this year's preseason, we're sprucing things up with improvements to our existing systems, like items, runes, and the elemental rift. Let's start with our plans for items. While some champions and classes have lots of build options, we've still got others that don't feel like they've got a mythic or legendary that really speaks to them. So we're gonna be adding some new items and tweaking some others. This will include two new mythic items. The first one is a support tank item, perfect for champions that wanna get aggressive and charge into the middle of a fight. When you immobilize an enemy champion, all nearby enemies will take increased damage from your team for a short period of time. The second new- Hold on, I'm not fucking listening. What did he just say? What did this guy, guy just say? Hold Let's on. Let's start with our plans for items. Plans for While some items. champions and classes have lots of build options. We've still got others that don't feel like they've got a mythic or legendary that really speaks to them. What? So we're going to be adding some new- Guys, 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 what? New items and tweaking some others. This will include two new mythic items. The first one is a support tank item. Why do supports need a new mythic? Why? It's not like Locket is extremely fucking overpowered. It's not like you just press a button and all of a sudden your team gets 500 plus shield and all the stats on the item are completely unbalanced. I mean, <laughs> it's not like Locket is just not completely over overpowered, but sure, I mean, go ahead, tell me about it. Please, tell me about it. Perfect for champions that want to get aggressive and charge into the middle of a fight. Want to get aggressive and charge in the middle of a fight. When you immobilize an enemy champion, all nearby enemies will take increased damage from your team. Wow, we just put, we just put the Bissa mask on a mythic item. We're so regional. For a short period of time. The second new mythic item is built for mages who are looking for a little more survivability. It grants damage reduction that lingers for a few seconds honestly, after you get- Honestly, I can't even blame them for this one. I can't even blame them for this one. Because like, just think about Shieldbow, right? Shieldbow has randomly on an item 700 shields or some shit. Like, it's absurd, right? But it needs to have it because the game has so much fucking damage all of a sudden that like, if Shieldbow doesn't exist, you can't play the game. You can't play the game as they carry. I mean, I don't even fucking blame them for this shit. Get hit. The game is just in such a fucking shit state, they need to add a mythic for so Zerat can survive? Like, come on. And while the protection- I mean, Everfrost is supposed to do that. I guess the bonus 300 HP on the item is just not good enough, guys. We need more. And holds, you'll also get ability haste. We think it'll be particularly good for longer range mages. We need a mythic that helps them survive a dive rather than pile on extra damage. When we updated League's item system, we wanted to give every champion strategic choices in every game. We still think that's the right goal for Mythics, but our thinking has changed when it comes to Legendary items. We think it's okay if some champions build the same Legendary in most games, if it's a perfect fit. But we also want you to have plenty of options, which is why we're improving Legendaries for Mages, Assassins, and Tanks. For example, Assassins can look forward to a new Legendary item that gives Ability Haste, and also refunds a portion of their Ultimate's cooldown with enemy takedowns. Tanks that can never get enough mana will be happy with a new legendary item. Whoa, we had the Seraph's Embrace for tanks! Mana, and also burn some of it to create a shield Woo. whenever they immobilize an enemy. And finally, mages who are tired of being denied their hard-earned kills can rejoice. They'll be receiving a new legendary that grants magic pen against recently shielded enemies. Whoa, we had the Serpent's Fang for mages! When, when it's so, like... Okay, I mean, keep adding Serpent's Fangs everywhere. I mean, I guess at some point, Shielding Champs are just going to be useless. So that's fine if that's the direction you want to go with. I mean, why not, you know? Why would you pick Shielding when you can pick Healing nowadays? As for runes, we think there are some good targeted changes we need to make. Most of all, we feel the Inspiration Tree's identity has been pretty unclear. And we'd like to broaden its Keystone use. Pretty unclear? Hello, Mr. Ryan. What's your name? Brightmoon? 
pretty unclear. I mean, haven't you seen the amount of cookies pro players take? What do you mean unclear? I mean, I'm pretty sure it's clear what, what kind of a identity inspiration has. It's a fucking cookie tree. For example, we're reworking Glacial Augment to double down on its fantasy of slowing down enemies. We are also making some modifications to Lethal Tempo to lean into its attack speed fantasy and give it a more distinct use case in the Precision Tree. Up next are Bounties. Champion Bounties give teams who are behind a way to get back into the game without being a straight shot to victory. And this year, we're adding a second way for teams to try and make a comeback. Objective Bounties will work like Champion Bounties, except you cash them in by taking map objectives, like Towers or Baron. They ramp up slowly when the enemy team lead grows, and the bounty is shared I hate with this. your whole team. I definitely, I definitely hate this change. I definitely hate this change because it's like, you don't want to take a tower when you're behind. Like, it can actually be bad for you, but now you have a fucking bounty to take tower when you're behind. How does that make any sense? Who claimed it? Taking objectives really is the best way to come back when you're behind. So we want to help make that a clearer and more rewarding strategy. It's so weird. It's that so said, weird. That said, if a team is really far ahead, objective bounties won't change that. Being the better team should always get you a win. So we'll be watching the new bounty system closely to keep things in check. Finally, let's talk about our biggest addition this preseason. Like, why is he smiling? Dude, I'm, I'm about to cry. Like Dragons. We really like how each dragon creates unique terrain, grants powerful buffs, and adds more strategy to the mid and late game. So this preseason, we're adding two more. Up first is the Hextech Dragon. I mean, when your team defeats it, you'll all gain additional ability haste and attack speed. And if you claim the soul, you'll receive a chain slow that works kind of like Static Shiv's passive. When this dragon takes over the rift, it creates Hextech gates that can transport you to set locations across the map. I mean, it, like the, the dragons, you know, I think the dragons aren't like you know, like, here's the thing, this, like, new dragons should have been added a long time ago, or it should have been reworked uh, a long time ago. I mean, they're finally doing something, right? Which is not bad. Like, this is probably the change I hate the least. Just, like, the worry with these new dragons is, they're just, they just seem way cooler than the other ones. They seem, they seem like fucking game warping. Like, just imagine teleporting fucking everywhere in the middle of a team fight with these fucking things, hectic, whatever the hell. Uh, and then we have a fucking ocean dragon giving you 20 health every 5 seconds. Like, please. What is this dragon diff, man? Oh, guys, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna spawn more bushes and it's gonna make uh, rain in the summoner's reef. Like, the second dragon joining the party is Hextech's darker sibling, the Chemtech Drake. Yeah. When you slay it, your team will deal increased damage when your HP is low, letting you turn around those close team fights. Close team this fights. Soul provides a Close of team fights. Well, sort of. When you die, you'll enter a zombie state. It's like it's like he's just he's like in the circus the way he's talking. Well, sort of. You know what I mean? Like, it's like it's like it's all a joke to him, actually. Where you can still cast abilities and continue fighting when you'd normally be looking at a gray screen. And when the Chemtech Dragon putrefies the map, it creates camouflage zones and fix. I mean, this is like, ugh, this is going to be so annoying to play versus, man. This is going to be, it's so annoying, actually, no one talks like this. That's what I mean. It's like he's talking just to troll or something. I don't even know. And like, I mean, it, it's cool. It's something new, but like, how many fucking, invis like everyone hates invisibility in this game. How many more do we have to have? They just released Auction, who's apparently permanent invisible every time he's at the wall, and the, the, the ability has no mana cost, and it's on cooldown in 10 seconds, like... Ah, dude... Locations. These dragons might seem more impactful than the current ones, and, well, they are. Our goal is to add... <laughs> look at him, look at him! Just listen to how he's talking! More impactful look. than the current ones. Look! And... Well, they are. Um, well, they are. It's like a fucking troll face on him. Look at him. Our goal is to add more unique encounters and meaningful strategy to the mid and late game. That's it's like it's like listening to McLaren's Anivia video. Literally, it's the same. I wouldn't be surprised if this is McLaren. These are some pretty big changes, and we're ready to adjust if they're making too much, too little of an impact. You can expect to see all of these changes on PBE in a couple of weeks. Look at him! He's troll facing! We'll be looking for your feedback in the months ahead. <laughs> it's like, we'll be looking for your feedback in the months ahead and a fucking troll facing him. 
outside of preseason, something we've heard from all of you is that you'd like more ways to express yourself and your achievement. I got so triggered. I got so triggered when I heard this. Just, 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 just listen to what he's about to say. In league. For some of you, ranked is how you define your progress. Ranked is how you define your progress? Shut the fuck up. And that's great. We don't want to change that. But we don't want to change that. For those of you who aren't focused on the Look at this climb, one, look at this one. There are great ways to express your own progress. Champion Mastery and Eternals. Champion Mastery and Eternals is what he mentions. Dude, who the fuck cares about them? It's as useless as your honor system, man. I've never ever, listen, I've never ever upgraded a single champion to Master 6 or 7. Ever in my life, ever in my life, ever, ever, ever. I guarantee you, I've never done it. A single time. You know what happened when Eternals came out? I disabled them on fucking day one. What the fuck is that shit doing on my screen? And this guy thinks all of a sudden that's... Oh, come Drop on, man. It's not a challenge. Champ, but they don't tell the story of your broader League legacy. Like, this is all made for silver players. Like, actually. Or for bronze or for casual. Like, I don't even know what this is for, made for. I don't think a single fucking high level player cares about this. Challenge system should achieve just that. Challenges rank up over time, showcasing your increasing. This is like, oh yeah, guys, we're gonna do some cool graphics here and uh, this, that, that, put some cool icons in and think it's a challenge. Like what? mastery and legacy across a bunch of different systems, modes, and gameplay, making it a little different than just a standard achievement. We want to highlight not just your rank and champion mastery, but also your inventiveness, breadth of play styles, collection, and everything else in between. Want to showcase your knack for never dying in ARAM? Or how great you are at killing minions in SR in the first 10 minutes? Maybe you've collected over 100 champions or love participating in events. All of this is now possible to track and display your progress with challenges. <sighs> You'll get the first glimpse of challenges when they Look, hit the next facing month. again. And the full system will launch early next Look year. Look at dislikes. I'm going to fucking dislike this. That's stuff. all I have to share with you today. What the fuck? Thanks so much for watching. And here's Safe Locked again to talk about game modes. When it comes to game modes, one thing we've been hearing from you all is that you'd like more variety in the modes we bring back alongside events. So let's talk about it. To start, we actually agree like that- Like she talks normally, but that guy is just trolling. Rotation of game modes can make some of the most popular modes like Earth and One For All feel a bit stale. Some of you have asked why we just don't bring back some of our other older game modes like Star Guardian Invasion or Ascension to mix things up. And the answer is that bringing back old modes isn't as easy as flipping Oh god, here we go. What am I, what am I, what am I, what am I feeling with? I mean, my, my team comp, I just, I don't want to play. Right? I don't. But, um... <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you don't really have a choice. Actually, what the hell am I doing? There's no way I'm playing you into that comp. I will die. Ah, uh, but now we're full AD. Well, it's whatever. Just fucking fit it. I'll just fit it up. ...a switch. League is constantly changing, which means all of our existing modes require a constant upkeep. For example, when we released Yumi, we had to figure out how she'd function in one for all. What happens when a Yumi attaches to a Yumi who is attached to a Yumi? Because of upkeep like this, we have to be very selective about the modes we maintain. And right now, there are just too few popular modes that feel worth the investment compared to making brand new modes or updating more resident ones. I don't really care about game modes. We've mentioned this before, but we think the sweet spot for game modes are ones that amplify champion fantasies and really build on what you love about your champs and summoners rift. So moving forward, we're focusing on adding more game modes that hit this goal. And to that, let's talk about Ultimate Spellbook. First and foremost, you all seem to really love this one. It was one of our highest engagement modes ever, second only to Earth. Well, it's probably because of that. popularity, think, we're super happy with much, how long you spent making oversized bad. champions with Chogoth Salt. And by that, we mean the total amount of time you spent in Ultimate Spellbook stayed high throughout the event. That gives us confidence that it's worth keeping around. That said, there are some clear areas of feedback that we want to address. Junglers were forced to take Smite and another Ultimate, which meant they couldn't choose another Summoner spell. They also missed out on a lot of exciting plays during the laning phase because they were stuck clearing camps. Beyond that, we also heard that games started to feel a little repetitive due to the small number of available ultimates. And we agree. So, this winter, we'll be bringing back Ultimate Spellbook with a bigger ult pool. We'll also be making some adjustments for junglers to ensure that your experience in Ultimate Spellbook is just as fun as everyone else's. 
If you'd like to learn more about our approach to game modes, you can check out the dev blog that's called Pros. I mean, that's it. Like, I'm not excited about next season after I see a video like this. Not gonna lie. Like, what is that? The best video, the best part about video is probably the new dragons, even though they're probably way too advanced compared to the older ones. But I don't know. Everything else is just a joke. What are they talking about? Our champions aren't complex. I think our kids are fine or whatever the hell she said. It's like, yeah, you read auctions abilities. It's totally fine. Champions uh, have hit to reasonably well after we release them. Yeah, auction uh, completely uh, balanced. Gwen was completely balanced too when she was released. I don't know. You missed the Mumu part? I know that one. That's just so random. I don't even know why they included that in the video. It makes no sense.